Hey, it's Mars. Welcome back to my channel where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. In today's video, we're going to be doing a reading vlog, a really important one because it's for my favorite author, Adam Neville. So he sent this to me. I even have a really cool bookmark that he sent me. I've had kind of a hard time getting back into reading. I mean, kind of is not really the right terminology I would use. Like absolutely haven't been not haven't been reading, but I feel like this would be a really good way to kind of jumpstart that, try to get back into it. And maybe you're struggling with reading too, but I am here to inspire you to read again, if that is the case. So what I want to do is read one chapter, talk about it, another chapter, talk about it. Usually in these reading vlogs, I tell you exactly what's going on in these early pages of the book because it's like 20, 25 pages in. So I don't think there's any real spoilers there, but of course, if there's something big, I won't tell you, but I want you to get a real feel for how the book is starting and how it's feeling. So maybe you might want to pick this up as well. But if you don't know what this book is about, this is a apocalyptic alien horror and it's, it has some biblical demonic elements to it. So I'm very curious what that's gonna be like because most of the stuff that I read from Neville is supernatural stuff. I do have another book of his that's a, apocalyptic story as well. It's Lost Girl, but I haven't gotten to that. So I have no idea really what to expect, except I know that it will be brutal. It will be creepy and scary. So I know that I'm going to get those at least in this book. So the gist of this is that there is some type of environmental anomaly. The skies turn red and these creatures that are not from our realm come through and begin to cause havoc, chaos horror. This is taking place in England and we are going to be following these characters who are trying to survive. Don't forget to like and comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you're feeling about this book. How do you like Adam Neville? You know, let me know what's going on. And if you would like to get more videos from me about horror books and supernatural books, please hit that subscribe button. The first chapter is, it begins with this kind of reminiscing of this character, Carl's childhood, his mother, his father, his grandmother, his grandfather, these warm, beautiful memories of their life together. He can see them in his room. And, and it wasn't exactly clear if they're there because they're a figment of his imagination or their spirits you know maybe they're dead or maybe it's something i don't know who knows so it's not exactly clear but he has this sensation of like oh everyone is together and then we start getting this information that sort of sounds like a rapture but instead of it being a religious rapture it's a alien rapture the sky is red there are these spheres that are hanging in sky. People are being lifted or levitated or beamed up to some place high in the sky to where it's so high they just disappear. You don't know where they go. And it's not just people. It's also animals and any living thing. So it sounds really terrifying. But Carl, for some reason, is not, he's not getting chosen to go. He is stuck on Earth. The beginning quote of this book really sets the scene. It's a quote from H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, and says we can never anticipate the unseen good or evil that may come upon us suddenly out of space. The first chapter has some really beautiful imagery, you know, especially when we're talking about Carl's family and he's having these memories, like talking about the Saturday mornings in the 1970s when he was a kid and like the Easter egg hunts they would have, the sound of his grandfather's teeth on his pipe, the, the dinner that, were, that they were eating, like mashed potatoes and custard and pastry, and these very comforting moments of like when he's tucked into bed and he gets this like kiss on the forehead. So it's kind of similar to like maybe your life is flashing before your eyes type situation and his family is really convincing him that they should that he should come with them because it's salvation and it seems like this feeling that the people are having like when they're being lifted up it's like a euphoric feeling or something like that because nobody is struggling it seems like something 
profound and special. But with Carl being left behind, it's kind of curious, like, why would he be left behind? Like, what are the rules for this? That's what I'm really curious about. Let me read how he describes the sky. Elsewhere in the seared sky above the neighboring town, Carl glimpsed the edge of another great object, partly obscured by his roof. Vast dimensions defining themselves by blocking the stars to form an uneven silhouette. This object was closer to the ground than the unfamiliar moon and large enough to smother half the eastern sky. An idea and then an image of a great number of these crude spheres hanging like hot coals across a crimson horizon. So in chapter two, we're getting some more clarity on what's going on with Carl. Carl recently had contracted some sort of virus that's like taking over Europe and it's killed like millions of people and he barely survived it but he is now back home in his house and when he wakes up he kind of thinks everything is sort of normal besides that he feels like shit because <laughs> he's still not fully recovered and he kind of remembers you know these things that he kind of saw in the first chapter but it's i don't think he's really connecting the dots at this point so he gets out and he's kind of fumbling around we get a little bit of insight into his ex-wife sounds like they had a relationship that went uh, wrong because they wanted a child, but by the time they agreed to have one, it was a bit late. And so when they tried to get IVF, it didn't work. And that sort of caused a rift between them. So he's kind of uh, thinking about her, wondering why she's not calling him to check up on him, you know, because he was sick and uh, he's fumbling around the house and he begins to notice that all of the neighbor's doors are just open. There's no sounds of cars or life or anything. He's just like, hmm, that's strange. And as the day goes by and the sky kind of turns red and he's starting to notice that his phone doesn't work and this, the TV doesn't work, there's no signals, there's no nothing. He starts to think, well, maybe, maybe this was a war. You know, maybe a war has happened and I slept right through it. So it, it's, it's kind of grounding us a little bit here. Like we're getting to understand like where he's at. And I also got to clarify in chapter two that these big black red spheres that were in the sky this is where the people were going to when they were being levitated from the earth somehow. So this is, they're going into these spheres. It kind of reminds me like just a tiny bit of Night of the Comet and maybe it's just like the red sky thing. I saw that when I was a kid and that, there's so many scenes in that movie that just stuck with me forever and kind of just live inside of me. Also too, there, when, when this like rapture was happening, there were also these bells. Hell's bells. And I really, so this is kind of uh, the foreshadowing, right? Of like the biblical aspect of this, because I think we always think about like the trumpets of Jericho or whatever. And so like, it, it's, it's really interesting to me, um, especially in like medieval um, biblical stuff. They always talk about bells, you know, trumpets and bells, <laughs> you know, being like this sign uh, of, I don't know, hell breaking loose or something. So I really like that little detail. Okay, I'm back and I got myself a nice sugary English tea because in these chapters, Carl is talking about coveting a sweet sugary uh, tea. So I just had to make one just because. So in chapter three, Carl decides to go out into the neighborhood and investigate these houses with their open doors. Is everybody really gone or is this just, I don't know, some weird anomaly that's happening? So he goes to the houses, he goes inside of them and there is nobody there. And it really looks like people just left suddenly. He does go to his neighbor though, who he does know, and he finds his elderly neighbor in a room that is uh, described in a way that it's just like a hoarder's nest. It sounds like someone who's been ill for a long time couldn't really get out of bed, so they're kind of just existing in that room, and the room has just become everything. Bedroom, kitchen, toilet type situation. He does describe her, and it's pretty creepy. He says, a ghostly hair that hadn't been combed in a while stuck from Katie's pink scalp and reminded him of a baby bird abandoned in a nest. Roomy eyes had leaked the remaining blue of the irises, the cellara, bloodshot and yellowing. She didn't look well. 
stick-like bones indented a blue nightgown. She's also been suffering from the virus or, you know, whatever had been going around at that time. So it looks like she's been there for a really long time. As he's going through the neighborhood and these homes that, you know, he never been in before. So he's going into all of these homes and he's able to see these intimate spaces their kitchens, their bedrooms, their bathrooms, you know, and he's he's able to see like how they lived. So he's still kind of struggling with the this idea that something has really happened. So he's trying to rationalize all of it. And it's just becoming more clear and more evident that it is only him, this woman, Katie, and like a crow in this whole entire neighborhood that should have like 300 people living there. The pool for him to investigate and to see what's going on, it's, it's strong enough that he's risking his life going through this neighborhood because he's still really sick and he's still in a, a lot of pain, which for me would feel like an, a kind of adrenaline. What's happening? It doesn't make any sense. And this is really scary but also tantalizing. I'm alone. This is a whole entire new situation. And now I kind of have this ability to be in places and see things that I never would have before. It's a new type of enlightenment, but it's in this bleak uh, dread, you know? We also kind of get this sort of insight to Carl as a person. And it just sounds like he never really got there. He was never really able to have control over his life and have the business that he wanted and have the family that he wanted and you know whatever other goals that he had he he never reached them and it's sort of a strange uh, thing that he didn't do well in life but in this other situation he seems to be almost the only other person that has survived this catastrophe which is interesting because it's like well why so I think we're going to stop here. This is 34 pages into uh, The Fiends of Hell by Adam Neville. My feeling for this is that it's it's really wanting to lay the environment for you. So it's going to be describing a lot. It's really going to be giving you a lot of details. And because I think there's like something that's important to us, the reader, understanding maybe the gravity of the situation. And the thing I always liked about Adam Neville was that he is really able to describe like feelings, uh, you know, like what's it feel like to go into an abandoned house? Like, how do you describe that feeling? It's, I think it's kind of hard, you know, but he's really good at that. So I think he really wants to start building this tension, this dread, this kind of sense of isolation and also uh, curiosity. I definitely think it's going to be a whole entire journey. My favorite thing so far is coming across Katie because when Carl, their names both start with K, by the way, I don't know if that has any meaning, but the only other person that's around is this bedridden woman who just, you know, looks like she's not gonna be much longer for this earth. She almost feels like some type of archetype. You know, like if I keep thinking about it, like kind of like this archetype maybe in the story. I, I don't know, I have to think about it more, but it's, it feels like it's more than just like an old woman in a house. It feels like there's something symbolic there. So I don't know, but that's just kind of what I was thinking. Trying to read today was a little bit difficult, I have to admit. I did put on music and that makes it a little bit easier to get immersed into the book, but it's kind of one of those things where I feel like my eyes are leave, losing its place constantly. And then I kind of have to go back and uh, reread things, you know, and just make sure that I'm reading them. And even if I am reading them, I feel like my mind is wandering and I'm not capturing the essence of the words. So it's been interesting to try and read today. I feel like I did a lot better than I thought I was gonna do. When I give myself a task like this, uh, I know that I'm gonna do it more than maybe, you know, on my own specifically, even though I've been trying to incorporate an hour of reading every day, but it's been hard. Like even reading books that I love and, you know, authors that I adore, it's, it's just hard. There's just something missing. I wouldn't say it's just focus. I would say it's something else. I think the problem is that I'm not able to surrender. I'm not able to surrender to the demands of reading and all of the thoughts and things that are going on in my mind, they're just too loud or too opaque. It does feel like a little bit like really dark shades and trying to read. 
that's kind of what it feels like, you know, and then you just kind of give up. Thank you to Adam Neville for sending this to me. I appreciate it so much. You're so awesome. And it means the world to me. So if you guys are liking this and you like where it was going, do give it a try. I'm gonna try and incorporate this to my at least an hour a day reading and I'm hoping it's gonna get me back to where I wanna be. So that was my reading vlog for All the Fiends of Hell by Adam Neville. I hope that you liked this video and I'm still working on my format and my background and all kind of stuff. So it's gonna look a little funky for a while, but yeah, I think it's okay for today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Please take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.